this question appeared on a video about using Excel VBA to create Word documents. And what this viewer wanted to know was how to close down the Word document if it was already open when the code starts running. So really the question is all about how to get a reference to an open instance of Microsoft Word. And that's what we'll focus on in this video. To get started, I've created a very simple Word document that I can use to close down. And I have saved this so I can reopen it multiple times to test different techniques. I've also created a blank Excel workbook, saved it as a macro enable file, and then in the Visual Basic Editor, I've inserted a module and I've made sure that I've set a reference to the Microsoft Word object library. This is just to get some help from the IntelliSense as we write our code. So to get started, let's create our first basic subroutine called close doc. Let's declare a variable to hold a reference to the open instance of Word. I'm going to call my variable wd and its type is going to be a word.application. Then to get a reference to the open instance of Word, I'm going to say set wd equals and then use the get object function. This function has two parameters. I'm going to use the class parameter to pass in the name of the word application class as a string. So just to avoid mistyping it, I'm just going to copy and paste word application from the variable declaration. At that point, I can use the F8 key to step through this just to prove that I don't return any errors. That's good. So that must mean that I'm getting a reference to the open instance of Word. And by far the simplest way to close down all the documents open in that instance is to apply the quit method to the Word application. So if I say wd.quit, that will close down that instance of Word and of course any documents contained within it. So if I run that subroutine, Word disappears and all the documents are closed. It's important to note that if the getObject function can't find an instance of a Word application, it will cause a runtime error. So while we don't have Word running, let's just run this subroutine again to prove it. And there we go, there's the runtime error dialog. And if we click the debug button, it's no great surprise that it's this line that causes the problem. So we should add some basic error handling code just to prevent this. Let's reset the procedure. And then just above the line which tries to get a reference to a Word application, we can say on error, go to, and then make up a description for the error that we're likely to encounter. So I'm going to call mine no word. After that line, we should reset the error handling system to behave normally. So I'm going to say on error go to zero. And then I want to create this section by copying the label I've just written here and pasting it in at the bottom of the subroutine and then finish that with a colon to convert it into a line label. So after this line, if anything goes wrong, which could be this one, the code will jump down to this line label and execute any code found in here. We're not really going to do anything, but just to prove that it is working, let's add a message box. Uh, Word isn't open. And then we also want to make sure that this message box will only appear if an error occurs. So I'm going to make sure that we exit from the subroutine before the error handling section with an exit substatement. So having put all that in place, let's run the subroutine again. We'll find that Word isn't open. But if we just reopen that document, so I'm going to quickly reopen the close me file, head back to the Visual Basic Editor and then run the subroutine again, we find that Word quits, but we don't see the silly message box at the end saying that Word isn't open. I'm not sure that the message box is particularly valuable here. Um, I would prefer to use this just as a basic way out if Word isn't open. So I'm just going to remove the message box and replace it with a simple comment that explains what's going on. So there we go, there's the basic code that allows us to get a reference to Word if it's open and then close it down if it is. Now what if we wanted to close down any documents that we had open but keep the Word application running at the end? To do that we can't quit from the application. What we need to do instead is reference the documents collection of the Word application. And we can apply the close method to the documents collection to close down any open documents but keep Word running. So just to demonstrate that, if I go back to reopen my close me file, and then let's just press Control N a couple of times to open up a couple of brand new blank documents in the same instance of Word. And then going back to the Visual Basic Editor, we can run this subroutine again, and we'll find that all the documents close down, but Word is left open this time. And of course, I can manually close that just by clicking the cross up there. Now what if you had lots of documents open, but you only wanted to close down a specific one of them? Let's just reopen the close me doc and then we'll create a couple of extra blank documents by pressing Control N a couple of times. 
And what I'd like to do is close down the document whose name is closeme.docx. So to do that in the VB editor, rather than referring to the entire document's collection, we can refer to a single specific item within it by opening some round brackets and then entering the name of the document. So let's say closeme.docx. Close the double quotes and close the round brackets. And then I can run the subroutine again, and that will close down just that single document, leaving the others open. If you've made changes to the document that you're closing down, you'll need to indicate whether you want to save changes to it. Let me just reopen the close me document again, and then let's make a change. Let's add a new line. Let's say, okay. And then if I go back to the visual basic editor and I attempt to close that file down, it will prompt me. You see the little flashing uh, taskbar icon down there. Do I want to save or not save the changes? I'm going to say don't save this time. It'd be nice not to be interrupted with that message. Let's add a bit of extra code to the close method. If I type in a space after its name, you'll see there's an optional save changes parameter. So I'm going to say save changes colon equals, then I'm going to set that to be true. So I'm going to open up the close me document again, and then I'm going to add that same line again. So it'll say, okay. And then back to the visual basic editor. And if we run the subroutine this time, we won't be prompted if we want to save the changes. It's already happened automatically. So if I just open the file one more time, we'll see that it contains the extra line OK. Now, what if we wanted to close down some, but not all of the documents we had open? So for example, let's say we wanted to close down every document except for the one called close me. That one should be left open. One way to do that is to loop through the documents collection. So let's add a new variable to allow us to do that. I'm going to declare a variable called doc as a word dot document. And then we can just use our standard for each loop. We'll have used this in many previous videos. So you may well recognize this basic structure for each doc in. And then I want to reference the word application and then it's documents collection. I'll just add the next doc line. Just to quickly demonstrate that this is processing the collection, a debug.print statement is a good idea. So you can interrogate some of the properties of the objects. So let's say debug.print doc.name, for example. And then if I run the subroutine, we should see the list of all the open documents appear in the immediate window. What I really want to do though is only list out the names of the documents except for the close me document. I can do this in a couple of different ways. So we can wrap an if statement around the debug.print statement. We could say if doc.name is not equal to, and then say close me.docx, then debug.print the document's name. And then we can have our end if statement at the end of that. And if I just clear the contents of the immediate window and then run the subroutine again, we'll find that it prints out the name of everything except for close me. You can write these if statements in a variety of ways. We could also check to, to print out the names of any documents whose name begins with the word document. So we could say, for example, if doc.name like, and then write the word document and the asterisk wildcard character. So that's the, uh, the word document followed by any number of any characters. So I'll get the same end result here. It just gives you a bit more flexibility in the way you write these logical tests. So document two and document one. So now I've established that I'm looking at the correct objects, I can get rid of the debug.print statement and simply say doc.close. And if I run the subroutine again now, we'll find that all the documents except for close me are closed down. So there we go. There's some basic information about getting a reference to an open instance of Word and then manipulating the documents held in that instance. Hopefully that's enough to answer the original question. If not, feel free to carry on asking more questions and I'll do my best to keep up with the answers. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.